Hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to the Brit Canal with Wes Hancock podcast. I'm excited to get this one going. Steve and I have had to reschedule a few times due to my technology issues and everything else. But uh, on the screen here, you see Steve Kelly for episode 43. How are you doing tonight, Steve? Good. Good. Steve is the uh, currently the head wrestling coach at Nyack in Mason City. He was a former standout athlete at Brit and Wes Hancock. And I'm excited to talk to Steve about um, a lot of wrestling, a little bit of football, and everything else in between, possibly. Uh, before we get to Steve, though, I need to recognize our sponsors for the podcast. My goal, as always, is to raise money for the Sanger Legacy Fund, let people tell their stories and reminisce. Uh, talking to Dave Patter the other day, he's going to be on a podcast, and he goes, I love that I'm going to be part of your library. I thought that was a neat way to describe this podcast, was it's a library of stories and everything else of people from Brit and Kanawa and Wes Hancock. So like always, a few extra minutes, we'll go into this, me plugging my sponsors. That's all right, though, because... Um, a lot of money got brought into the legacy fund because of those sponsors. And I apologize to my sponsors. Usually I have a background behind me um, with all their logos on it. It's just like permanent physical advertising. Uh, I had to buy a new computer because my school one was uh, getting repaired. Uh, the new one I bought doesn't have virtual background for Zoom. We got my wife's back today. Hers is an old computer and doesn't have that requirement system i don't know it's all this techie stuff so here we are i'm sitting on my bed in the spare room downstairs i'll make it up to all you sponsors out there somehow some way and get you your get your money's worth so my sponsors tonight the brit car truck bike and tractor night cruise ewing funeral home and monument company jay hiscox of state farm insurance daniels auto collision nick schmidt kelly real estate sidetrack lanes wilson's diner brit food center Levi Don Trucking, Miller and Sons Golf Cars, Brit Vet Clinic, The World with Nate Podcast, The Original Saw, Mary Jo's Hobo House, First State Bank, Katie Salon and Tanning, Jeff and Becky Nielsen, and the Wes Hancock Hall of Fame. So thanks again to those sponsors. Uh, quick sports update here. The baseball team is 5-12, and 3-11 and 11 in the top of Iowa Conference. Tomorrow night, the 28th, they play at South Hamilton. And then July 2nd is the first round of districts against West Fork. The softball team is 2-19 and 19 overall, 2-13 and 13 in the TIC. Uh, they had a big 20-3 win against North Iowa the other night for their first win of the season. And then a pretty crazy comeback win against Forest City, 14-13, to, to get their second win um, in the win column there. Uh, they also are at South Hamilton tomorrow night. The 29th, they're at Belmont, and then the 1st of July, they start regionals against St. Ansgar. Uh, just a reminder, you can go to sangerstrong.com to give to the Sanger Legacy Fund. Um, we've been funding the Hall of Fame scholarships, helping the athletics department uh, with any needs that they have. So the more money that goes into that fund, the better it is for our students and our communities and schools. Way back when, 10 episodes ago on episode 33, I talked to Chuck Mockley. And speaking of Chuck, uh, him and I are both on the board for the Alumni Association. Uh, they wrote me into that last year, and I'm excited to help keep things moving along there. So contact Bill Frito if you want to go to the Alumni Banquet this year. 20 episodes ago, episode 23, Jay and Kevin and I talked about the playoffs. 30 episodes ago in episode 13, the 1980 Girls State Championship basketball team. And 40 episodes ago in episode three was Danny Broom, the legend himself. Speaking of the West Hancock Hall of Fame, they're my first sponsor tonight. At halftime of the Garner game on August 26th, the first ever members of the West Hancock Hall of Fame will be announced. And then after the game, there'll be a reception at the Brit Country Club to honor the inductees. Uh, they've asked me to MC the event, so I'm pretty excited to be a part of that. Uh, be the closest I'll ever get to a Hall of Fame, that's for sure. Uh, please come to the game and the reception to honor these amazing coaches, athletes, and teams. Um, I've posted on the uh, podcast page a, a time or two who all got inducted. Thanks again to Steve Lansing and the committee and the Sanger Legacy Fund for making this awesome new Hall of Fame happen. Thanks to the Brit Car Truck Bike and Tractor Night Cruise for sponsoring over 30 episodes of the podcast. Jared Wingard and company run these great events. They take place on July 20th, August 17th, and September 21st of 2022. They're all on Wednesday nights, so it should be easy for families to get to. He also owns Mojo Productions. The fifth annual event has free kids activities. Trophies are presented for all categories, and a $1,000 award is given out at each show. 
You can't beat free admission and great food and drink from Brit vendors only. Check out the video for more information on BritCarCruise.com. Then we have the Brit Food Center. They're your locally owned, family operated hometown grocery store in Brit. They offer fresh produce, fresh cut meat, fresh bakery, and homemade deli items. They're working hard to meet the needs and requests of their community. The Brit Food Center is a proud supporter of Wes Hancock. They're open seven days a week from eight to eight daily, except on Sunday from eight to six. Check them out at BritFoodCenter.com or follow them on Facebook for deals and specials. Call them at 843-4429. That's the Brit Food Center. And then one more sponsor here, and we're going to get ready to go with Steve Kelly. Uh, that would be Daniels Auto Collision in Charles City. Owner Jason Daniels is a 1990 West Hancock grad. Whether you need a minor fix-up or complete collision repair, Daniels Auto Collision is a North Iowa's premier auto body shop, and they'll have your vehicle back on the road looking better than new. With over 30 years of experience and all major insurance is accepted, why take your chances with anyone other than Daniel's Auto Collision? Call them at 641-220-3805, email them at danielsautocollision at gmail.com, or check them out at danielsautocollision.com. All right, I'm out of breath, so we got to get to you, Steve. How you doing tonight, and how's life treating you? Oh, life's good. Uh, currently, right now, you know, other than uh, family activities, just trying to finish up some recruiting we got a couple more weight classes we need to fill and um we actually you know when we were originally going to do this um i was down in uh at the disney duels we were trying to get lined up with uh uh doing the podcast and and it mm -hmm. was kind of tough to connect but we were down there it's kind of interesting you know um the building that we were in had at the same time they were hosting the largest the world's largest volleyball tournament Oh, wow. And it had a 250 courts going on at the same time. So it was chaos. Yeah, it was, it was interesting though. And there was literally but, uh, games going on on yeah, each one of those? Yeah, 250 courts going on. The wrestling was going on and like the National Nurse Practitioners Conference was going on in the same <laughs> building. So he had nowhere you're going. So were you um, recruiting down there or did you have guys yeah, wrestling we were down, there. down there? Yeah, we okay. were recruiting down there. So uh, guys and girls, because we're just adding the women's side. So I'm going to be the assistant uh, women's coach and uh, help out with that too. But uh, a lot of family activities um, that keeps us real busy because the kids are heavily involved with stuff. But, uh, um, you know, like Cole, he's taking some summer classes and then he's got some hogs that he's showing at the fair. Um, Kennedy's working on her basketball stuff. She, she goes down to Grandview um, a couple times a week. Um, to do some of their uh, summer games. And then uh, Creighton's rehabbing his ACL. He tore that back in uh, uh, back in October during football and okay. uh, went all season through wrestling. And then uh, we're doing some open mat. Um, and we didn't know it was tore. Hmm. And uh, so he, he had that checked out and then uh, had surgery a little while ago. So he's getting that re repaired. And then uh, Hayden's busy with a bunch of different projects around the house. So it keeps us busy. What what grade is Caden? Uh, who's that? Your youngest. Yeah. Uh, he'll be in seventh grade. In seven. Okay. Yeah, and he's got race on. Just got oh, race on today. So it's uh it's gonna be a tough night for him. Nice. Oh yeah, I remember that. Uh, I remember the most when you get the braces off, though, you keep licking your teeth the whole time. You're like, oh, this feels amazing. But that first yeah, he's got to have week those or two. two years. So that's, that'll yeah. be that'll be tough. Yeah. Is Creighton going to be ready for football season or is he going to have to redshirt? I, I don't know. It's uh, six months will be um, like end of October. And they say you have uh, to be six months and 100% of yeah. the strength, the other one. They they yeah. won't, uh, you know, wave, wave on that because, you know, they want it to be a, a good rehab, which I'm yeah. glad that. Yeah, otherwise you're back to square one if you exactly. try to rush it. So yeah, and he'll be a sophomore. Okay, I was thinking he was a sophomore last year. So yeah, he's he's good. He's got has a couple of years left to go, regardless. Yeah, so. yeah, that was a tough one though. Yeah, was, yeah. Football team sounds like they're going to be pretty good this year. Yeah, it looks pro they're going to be good for a few more years. I mean, there's, there's some yeah. really good kids coming through the system right now. Yeah, and it's a good culture. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll be a, I, I think we're going to have a dynasty here. We've won two of the last three and 
it sounds like these groups are pretty stout. So I could see us winning a couple more. That'd be nice. Well, you go back over the years and it's like, there's so many ifs, mm-hmm. you know, you, there could be six, seven titles in our trophy case. Yeah. Let's yeah. Kevin it. Sanger and I are doing a podcast in a month. He's doing a part two with me and we're going to talk best state championship team, best runner up teams, which teams should have won state, you know, even teams that didn't make the playoffs that could have done some damage. So we're going to talk about, there could have been at least six or seven. So, well, that team, you know, I know you've talked about that before, but um, you know, that I can't remember what grade I was in, but my brother, Tim, he was a junior. And I remember that that was, that was tough. The 81 and, team. Yeah. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. They the lost. Yeah, they went yeah, seven and like, one, lost by two to Osage. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, because like Whip was a senior that year. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. They Players. they were studs. Oh man, they were tough. Yeah, but back in the old NIC, you had to play a lot of you know, Four City and Osage and a lot bigger teams than we were, and just yeah, one yeah, one loss was, could do you in. That was a great conference because there's a lot of rivalry. Yep. And we're gonna get to that right here because we're gonna talk a little football. Um, you played uh, from '86 to '89. Uh, you guys were 36 and seven overall. Won two conference titles. Uh, your freshman and sophomore year, you guys were runner-ups at state. And then your junior year, you made the semis. And then you missed the playoffs your senior year, which happened to be the first year of West Hancock football when Kanawa came on over, and it was officially West Hancock. Uh, what are some of your favorite memories from? Wes Hancock and Brit football. God, there were a lot. You know, as a freshman, you go on there and you don't know what to, what you're getting involved with. And, um, you know, I, I just remember Gene Perkins, uh, you know, respect the guy. He was a great coach. But being scared to death, not knowing what to do, because he'd call you out. And I love that fact that he'd do that because he made you want to learn. He forced it on you. Yeah. So uh, I definitely knew uh, that I needed to study. It's not like our playbook is, you know, a huge uh, complex book, but you want to know what you're doing when you're uh, being coached by that guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was, um, you know, it was awesome because in junior high, Timmerman basically taught you the basics mm-hmm. and then you just built on that year after year. And that's probably why, you know, that culture was set. For the success yeah you were i mean yeah you you were at the beginning stages per se of what we know today as west hancock football so you were you yeah know, quarter- i think you know personally i think the big turnaround came probably uh my brother jeff's senior year when they beat osage i remember there, there uh was it foy through a touchdown to uh uh hampy and it was a fourth down yeah in overtime and that broke the ice for the the classes you know and and so that they realized that hey you know what let's make the playoffs a year thing every 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 year let's get there yeah Um, and just understanding how important it was to these guys because i remember bob talking about uh to us underclassmen about or maybe even before we went into high school uh, about how, hey, there, there was, you know, there was a senior, a big, strong senior football player that was crying after a, a loss. And, and, you know, you think, wait a minute, that, it, it's important. And, and mm-hmm. that sets the tone for, for people coming through. Yeah, it's still important in 2022. I mean, I yeah. talk to people often, how's the team going to be this year? And, you know, text Mark and see how things are going. And a um, couple of the kids I've connected with that are on the team, you know, are just working hard and it's fun to see almost you know we're going on 40 years now since you know that 84 team that kind of there's always the 73 team that won it all but you have to go another decade until it became like a consistent almost every year thing so my junior year first game we go up to Rockford and we win and that was Bob's 100th win Mm -hmm. and we had pizza afterwards I think in Mason City um you know and and I, we just kind of thought, okay, this is, this just happens, but, but it is the culture that uh, not only that they um, develop, but it's the, the athletes too. And the parents, yep. you know, it's, 
it's it's something that uh, it, like Bob said, he it was he wanted to give this town a, a successful football program, and and it's important to our community. Yep, and track and just in general, oh, yeah, I mean, everything that's, was yeah, good. Track yeah. probably just it rivals his football success. Yep, when yep. you think about it. Um, let's see, like sophomore year, it was probably a little bit more fun for me personally because what you know, you, you weren't so nervous as a freshman. Um, my brother Pat was a senior that year, and you know, they were they were kind of that class, you know, because that that the seniors above them they had a bunch of bruisers, I mean, they mm -hmm. just powerful athletes, and so it was that kind of the next guy in mentality. and. And so that junior class kind of had to prove themselves. And that was, that was fun because, it, you know, everybody probably thought, well, they were runners up the year before, how is this team going to be? And I'm telling you, they, they won a lot of tight games, but they got down yeah. to the, they got down to the championship game, lost it to uh, Grundy, right? Grundy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, that was fun playing with Pat. I remember. And then Nick Smith, he was, he was a fun guy to play along with because I remember, you know, you'd be in a scrawny little sophomore on kickoffs and you'd run down and the, the guy's coming right at you and you're like, oh, crap. And then all of a sudden out of the corner of my eye, Nick Smith just levels the guy. And and uh, I was I was I was happy I was on Nick's team that day. Yeah, I, I'd be happy to be on that team every oh, day yeah. of the week because I remember practice when I was in you know the early 2000s. We'd be more sore after a practice than some games some weeks because it was you went after each other and there was some hard hitting and I'm like, I'm glad I, uh, I'm well, when I was a senior, my parents, we moved up to Buffalo center and a lot of people thought I was going to go play at North Iowa, but I obviously wanted to finish out my career in Brit and my school in Brit. And I was like, and man, I, I don't think I'd want to get hit by some of these guys more than I already do in practice. So. Um, well, the thing is that side of it. good fundamentals. Mm hmm and we, we play to the whistle you know I hear um it's kind of fun reading some message boards and uh the, everybody says we're dirty and yeah. it is because we play to the whistle yeah and and you know sometimes they they get on us about that but it, it's just physical football that's all it is yeah exactly you know. i i remember um one game that that i can't remember if it was quarterfinals or what round it was we played Rock Valley and it was, we played against this guy named Darwin Vander Ho, Hoff Ho, I think is his last name. And he was a male athlete of the year. And God, the guy ran like a deer and they got up on us. I think they thought they were going to kind of just take it to us. And uh, so they got up by a couple scores and then we ended up coming back and beating them. Yep. And uh, that was, a, that was a real fun win going yeah, 20, way over 29 28 that would have been your sophomore year in the quarterfinals on the road yeah quarters okay yeah that was that was a fun one i think uh we were kind of limping in there because jim chizik was uh i think he got hurt kind of nursing the knee um and boy he was a shifty back he you know because pat and nick that bob would always get mad at those guys because they would look for somebody to run over yeah he's like you don't always have to run over somebody <laughs> So then he, then it was nice having Jim Cheesy because man, he had some really good feet and he could, uh, sh you know, sneak around you. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that was, so that was a little bit uh, of concern, you know, going in there without Jim. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Got, got through them, got through IKM and then yeah, Grundy got the best IKM. was 19 to seven in that title game. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause we played IKM maybe Mike's year, uh, the year, two years before that, I think we played IKM and got beat by him. Right. Uh, sort of in the 85 year, 85, we got beat by Maurice orange city, like 41 to eight in the quarters. Man, maybe we beat them in the first, I can't remember off the top of my head. And usually I'm pretty good at that, but, um, okay. yeah, then we played them, uh, Cole played them in 2019 in the state championship year when they're IKM Manning. Yeah, they came our, and played them in the first round. Yeah, first round. Yeah, so we've yeah. and then we played them in the 06 semis and lost to them when like Brady Wilson and Josh Willer and those guys played. But I want to say 87 was the first time we played them off the top of my head. But well, then who was like uh, 
Pocahontas beat us in 84, I think. Flown, you know, the Flown that, that went on to play Iowa. I think Mike's that 85 year, they played uh, those guys, I believe. Yeah. And that was at Brit. I'd have to look. If I had my record book right by played. me, I'd look it yeah. up quick. But... Yeah, I'm testing you a little bit. Yeah, and I'm usually pretty good at that. I'm just, I'm sloughing a little bit. Um, but yeah, high school football in Iowa is awesome. Yeah, you know, there's there's nothing like you know the day of the day of the game. You go in and Ann Hagen's got breakfast breakfast for you at the We Three. She started that out, and then mm -hmm. you wear your jersey all day in school, and, and and the excitement builds. And so it's pretty hard to beat small town football. That's why it's that's why it's frustrating when uh, Iowa City Regina is playing one A football. That yeah. that's I know I'm, I'm I probably shouldn't say that, but oh no. The, I got into a Twitter war with um, that wide receiver they had who now plays at Iowa. I got into a Twitter war with his mom the day Regina beat Grundy Center in the state championship game because I wanted Grundy to win one. I did too. And that just torqued me off. And the mom was just chirping back at me and then a couple other kids and their barstool account did. And, the, and like the point is, you, it's not apples to apples you know you guys yeah you have 150 students in your school but you there's no special ed kids right? there's no SEL yeah. kids there's no you fill in the blank the public schools have to take everybody and that 150 kids you don't have a maybe the pool to pick from like you would at a, a private school it's just it's apples to oranges so apples to pomegranates but yeah <laughs> yeah whatever that's that's right. a whole different podcast in itself we could talk about so right oh yeah yeah. So digging through some of the stats, though, your sophomore year, you got in occasionally, got about 100 some yards rushing. Then your junior season, you were the second leading rusher on the team with 793 yards. Jeff Kuji led the team that season with 990. Uh, you and Kevin Sanger tied for the most rushing touchdowns that season with 10. Uh, you scored 62 points. You were fourth in tackles with 59. And then your senior season, the numbers are a little less because obviously you played a few less games uh you were third in rushing with 404 yards jeff kuji had 728 rick sanger had 551 that year uh, you only got three touchdowns that season again you were fourth in tackles and had a sack but sacks weren't really recorded as well back then as they are today so hard to know how much how many you guys actually had but um well your senior year i've talked to another guy or two about this first year of west hancock First year you guys had missed the playoffs since 83, but then they made it seven, eight times straight after that. Does that 89 season kind of hurt a little bit that you that was a tough one? Yeah, because yeah, you 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 broke the streak. And yeah. some people can say, Oh, it's just athletics, it's just a high school football game, but it's important to you. Yep. <laughs> and and uh and that's what that's what it is. It's important. Um yeah, it, it was, you have to get along in football right from the get-go. And it's not like that we didn't like, I mean, it was just figuring out how to play with the, the new set of kids from Kanawha. Mm -hmm. And once we, once we got to know them, it was, you know, it was a great relationship, but that's, that's what it was. It was, yeah. and then we, I remember we changed out like three or four different quarterbacks. And so there was a lot of fumbles between mm -hmm. the, the quarterback and the center. And that was a, that was a battle. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to, to, to hit the rewind button a little bit. Um, I remember, and, and Bob had a lot of wins that were meaningful to him, but I remember one of them that he talked about it was the, the, the time that Garner came over and, and vandalized our school yeah. and we had to go and play them. And I'm telling you what, there's no way we should have beat those guys that night. They were men against boys. And, but Greg Byers would not let us get beat that night. I mean, he was such a good leader. And, uh, and that was pretty, that was a very satisfying win. And, and Koji, boy, he stepped up too. He was a 10th grader going into that, you know, vicious uh, football game. And uh, he had a heck of a nice game too. So, what season would that have been? Like your junior That was my season? junior year. Okay, so 14 nothing at Garner on September 30th. Yeah, there's no way we should have won that game. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, that was satisfying. Yeah. Um, so back to Greg Byers. So it was uh he was the one that really started the the trend of 
um, morning practices mm. and, and Sunday workouts. Um, and, you know, cause the, the coaches were totally hands off with that. And, uh, they wanted the leaders to kind of rise to the top <laughs> and boy, he was, um, I always remember we wouldn't start Sunday practice until he'd show up. He had this red convertible and he'd do on the pavement. He'd do, he'd leave black marks doing donuts <laughs> and he'd have his hand out the window, you know, and he'd just come flying in and we would not start practice until he did that. Yeah. Uh, but that was great for team unity because that year, uh, and Kevin was a real good leader too. Kevin was quarterback. Um, there's, we shouldn't have gotten to the semis, but it was their leadership of that senior class that, that got us there. Cause I think, I think we got beat by Grundy, um, in yep. the semis that year. Four, 14 to seven. Yep. 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 Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a, uh, that was, that was a good, good game. It was, a, it was a battle. Yeah. Yeah, Grundy and Britt have had some, even up till just the last couple of years. There's been some good, good playoff battles with them in the '80s and well, yeah, there's some story behind it too. Like the Chuck Chuck Bradlaw, didn't he? Wasn't he a Garner guy? And then he was he a Garner was, guy. Yep. Yeah, he was their coach that beat us both those years. Yep, I talked to him on the phone the other day, a uh, couple months ago, uh, doing some of my research and stuff, and he had nothing but good things to say about Coach Sanger and was. Um, very, very appreciative of that Britt Garner rivalry and that blood into the Grundy Center Britt rivalry as well. So, yeah, people would always ask, okay, so did, did coach get real animated at halftime? No, it's just here's what you need to do, here's what you need to correct. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, some, some, somebody always thinks, well, you just got to yell and scream at somebody for them to, to get motivated. And, and that, that wasn't his approach. It was very no. professional. And I think that's I, why. Bob and and Gene were such a good match. You know, Gene was that intense um, defensive guy, and and, and um, you know, Bob was the offensive guy, and their personalities showed that. Yeah, I just remember at halftime it would be like one thing, like when we were blocking this, now we're going to do this. It would be like one, it always seemed like one or two minor adjustments that made the world the difference. We'd go out to the second half, and it was instead of pushing the tackle this way, you're going to let him go, and you're going to get the backer. It was just like one simple change, and it was just enough to kind of get the job done. It was never anything special. It just they no, they knew wasn't. what they were looking for. Well, and even now, you know, it's like I, I watch it differently. You know, as you get older, it's like you, you start liking different things. Like, but you like watching. Um, you know, when I was younger, I really didn't pay attention to the line. But, mm -hmm. you know, as you get older, you notice those little things, those little battles yeah. that happen. And, you know, there's a lot of teams that don't like our guys hitting them so hard all game long. Yeah. That was pretty apparent in the North Butler game. Um, you know, those guys were tough. And, and uh, the North Butler game this year. Yeah. And we just wore them out. And they didn't, they didn't want anything to do with us anymore. Nope. They were ready to go home by about the middle of the third quarter. Right. And that's where those coaches, they know, they notice that. Let's just keep running a dive. Let's just keep, if we have to run it eight times in a row, we're going to run it eight times in a row. Yep. Yeah. Ryan Johnson's done a great job being the line coach. Um, yeah, their technique is real good. That's yeah. one thing I know some of the officials that, that, you know, work our games and they're, that's one thing that they talk about is, is our physicalness and technique. Yep. Yeah, one of my plans for the podcast is get Kurt Walderbach. Do you know Kurt at all? He's from oh, he's Mason. Guy. He's, he's actually, uh, he was actually my PT back when I hurt my knee. And it's kind of weird. He's got a, he's got a cauliflower here. And uh, so I thought he was a wrestler. But uh, he said when he was playing football in high school, somebody got their finger jammed into his ear hole. Ooh. That's how he got cauliflower here. Nice. But it's kind of yeah. weird. It's, it, he's my son's PT also. Yeah, he's done a lot of Wes Hancock games over the years, I know. So I thought he'd be a fun, kind of a different perspective on the podcast and mm -hmm. um, get him to tell some stories from that side of that, uh, the I equation of the game. He's probably got to be careful because, you know, he's a basketball official. And, and, uh, true. Why they can dictate a game. <laughs> yeah. Basketball officials can. Yeah. yeah. Was... All right, I'm going to get to a few sponsors here. Let Steve catch his breath, and we're going to talk some wrestling. All right, Miller and Son Golf Cars. A uh, family-owned operation with over 50 years of business experience, 
Skip and Jim Miller worked together with their dad, Monty, until his passing in 1996. Associated with EasyGo, Miller & Sons now calls on over a thousand golf cars in three different states. Companies and courses are always extremely happy with their products, service, and honesty. This has resulted in double-digit growth each passing year. Based just outside of Brit, Miller & Sons employs 18 full-time employees and three part-timers. The next generation is being trained as we speak to ensure long-term stability. For more information, contact them at 843-4132. Email them at customerservice at millergolfcars.com. Visit them online at millergolfcars.com. Again, that's Miller & Sons Golf Cars. The original saw company is the leader in American-made radial arm saws, cross-cut power saws, and beam saws. They also offer accessories such as extension tables, measuring and clamping systems, dust shrouds, and miter saw stands. Original Saw's product line includes items for both the hobby woodworker and complex automated industrial settings. Their sister company, Williams & Hussey Machine & Tool, manufactures and sells molders and accessories for making custom and stock moldings and trim. The Original Saw provides through Jones Machinery a preventative maintenance and repair service of wood and metalworking machinery throughout the Midwest. Want to know more about Original Saw Company? Check them out online at OriginalSaw.com. The Jay Hiscock State Farm Team in Brit is a proud supporter of Wes Hancock and the Sanger Legacy Fund. They can help you with all your insurance needs, including auto, home, life, farm, business, and renter's insurance. For a free quota review, give Jay or Lindsay a call at 843-3563. Jay says, go Eagles, and Jay hopped on. He's doing like all of my podcast episodes, so thanks to Jay um, for his generosity. I want to thank Nick Schmidt for sponsoring the podcast. Nick is a 2000 West Hancock grad, and he simply wanted to give back by giving to the Sanger Legacy Fund. So thanks again to Nick Schmidt. And then head up to Wilson's Diner at 441 Main Avenue North in Britt for breakfast, lunch, and supper. They're closed on Tuesdays, but they're open every other day of the week. Check out their Facebook page for which days and at what times they're open. Call Wilson's Diner at 843-0550. Wilson's Diner is great food at great prices, and they look forward to serving you. And I think they're actually looking for a couple of new employees. So if you're looking for a part-time job, give them a call as well. All right, let's get to some wrestling here. Um, again, you wrestled the late 80s, uh, graduated in 1990. So 86, 87 was your first season. 89, 90 was your senior season. Uh, you went from one legendary coach to another one. What was it like stepping into that wrestling room with Al DeLeon? You know, it, uh, it wasn't a huge shocker because I um, knew him really well. He was out to our house a lot. and mm -hmm. um, Wrestling's a, 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 just a different animal when you compare like a, a coach from football to, to a wrestling coach. It's just, it's different. Um, but no, it was great because, you know, you always wanted to wrestle for him and, and had brothers. Um, ahead of me and and uh you wanted to be a part of that success and um it was i always might remember my mom saying that uh you know if you ever needed anything coach al's the guy that you need to contact mm -hmm. the guy could get blood out of, out of a turnip i mean <laughs> i know that's an old school thing but it was true i mean the guy would will his way towards anything i mean kyle when you think about when he came to Britt, he was still training for the olympics Mm -hmm. And you know, living in Britt, Iowa, uh, who's he going to grab like Mr. Brum and uh, wrestle <laughs> around with him before he, uh, uh, you know, wrestled in that Olympic trials? And I think if he would have got hurt, I think he would have made the team because he, I think he injured his shoulder or ribs real bad um, mm -hmm. in the trials. But uh, no, it was it was real fun. Um, he always he was always really involved with it. And, He'd always bring like uh, college guys to Brit to to show technique. Or I remember one time he he brought Nate Carr um, to our house, and then from there he went out to like Gregory, South Dakota, and did a camp. Um, so it was little things like that he always did, and and just the the little things that that he did for his program that that's why he's successful. I mean, I'm sure that there's other coaches that maybe knew more technique um but it was his his hands-on approach to it and so so it wasn't like uh really scary i mean we were really good that year my mm -hmm. freshman year 
because I think uh, traditional tournament, we got second. And I believe in the dual tournament, which was the first year of the dual tournament, I believe we got second to Lisbon. I believe. Second or third. I, yeah, I can't remember. It was tough. So we might have, maybe we got beat by Lisbon in the semis, and then we came back and beat Griswold um, for third. Maybe that's how it, yeah, it That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Did you wrestle and, varsity as a freshman? Yeah, I was, uh, let's see here, 126. Um, and we had, uh, that was, you know, you think about all the success that West Hancock has had, Britt West Hancock has had over the years. Um, and it's crazy that we haven't had move-ins. Um, but that's, that's like the one, the one year that we had a significant move-in. It was uh, Doug James. He was at Buffalo Center. And their program was kind of on the rocks a little bit, up and down. And uh, he moved in and lived with uh, Neil uh jeb and jerry or yeah it was, yeah my neighbors that's who who uh, doug james lived with and um he was real good really good athlete i think he got third his senior year um but uh no he, we, we we were really solid one guy that was that stands out that was um just a real good leader you know because when you come in as a freshman you need that uh person to kind of look up to and it's uh it was, it was mike grimmer and um, just a solid leader um, that I thought he was. And, 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 you know, you think about the guy today and very, very successful. Um, so, so hats off to that guy for being such a good, good leader. Um, What's he doing today? You know, he's, uh, no, but he's a guy you want to reach out to and chat with. Um, you good one? He, yeah. He's one of those, uh, I don't know, head hunt, head hunter companies, businesses, I think, you know, he's in charge of, of hiring big executives. Okay. Nice. He's down right. in the Des Moines area, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to look him up. I'm always interested to get every side of every story. Yeah, he'd be a fun story. West Hancock. Yeah. How well aware of you were you uh besides like your older brothers of the history of Brit wrestling at the time? Um was there you knew, but yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things you're a little kid running around in the gym mm -hmm. in between matches, probably getting principals mad at you because you're not sitting around or sitting in your seats or you make yep. a mess in the hallway. But I always remember, you know, hearing the stories and, um, you know, watching the, the, the guys, um, come up. I remember, um, you know, like Jeff Nelson watching him wrestle and, uh, Kevin Potts and those guys. And just, you know, I didn't really remember, um, like the Stevensons or, um, I remember as a little kid, though, John and Brett Hagen. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, the difference was, you know, Brett would beat you by 15. John would keep it close and beat you by four. You know, yeah. it just total different styles. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, I think about, you know, we've had a four-timer. We've had two guys that were in the finals. John and Brett were both in the finals. They were both four-time finals. Every year. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, numerous college All-Americans. So it's, uh, it doesn't just happen. There's, there's yeah. guys that are putting time in and, and people that are pushing them along the way. Yep. And it's like in the research I'm doing right now, Britt used to wrestle like East and West Waterloo in duels back in the 50s and 60s, go over there and beat them. Um, oh, they tied okay. one year. We lost by two the year that East Waterloo won the state championship in the, the big class. And um it's just fascinating to me how, like, even to this day, if I go somewhere and say, hey, where are you from? I say, Britain, they go, oh, wrestling. And these yeah. guys are in their 70s. They remember back in the 50s, we'd go and whoop three, you know, what we'd consider 3A schools nowadays um, in wrestling. And they just, it was just commonplace for Brit to beat them. Well, yeah, I remember Mike, his junior year at the Clarion tournament, they called it the Claremont tournament. And it was either it would rotate between Belmont and Clarion, you know, Clarion, boy, that's another rich mm -hmm. history of wrestling. But uh, uh, Valley of West Des Moines was there. Bosco was Don Bosco was there. And uh, Mike was wrestling his junior year in the finals. He was way ahead of the kid. And the kid threw him and he broke his elbow and he was done. That yeah. kid ended up winning state that year in 3A. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, uh, um, it's because of Coach Al just that mentality that he put in into you and 
uh, just little things that he did. Which of your brothers would you say was the best? Put you on the spot here. Jeff, hands down. You were? Is that he, what you he said? Was, yeah, Jeff was hands down. Jeff, the best. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say hands down. I mean, that's, um, you know, Pat was pretty good and so was Mike. You know, Mike should have been arguably a two-time champ. And and um, so it's, it's fun to have those guys as your brothers. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it was funny, you know, growing up with them, uh, it was there were some battles um and and i remember when i was a little manager in eighth grade watching pat and mike go at it and i'm like oh my god are they gonna kill each other <laughs> i was like coach al please go in there and stop them uh, See, i'm not getting in there <laughs> no no it was like two cats just going at it just fighting but that's that's what they wanted and and uh um you know it was important to them yeah could you hold your own against them no, they were they were they were tough. They they, they had that that edge about them. They just did. Yeah, my dad would always tell the story of it's between one of your brothers or and and one of the Finch boys. They both kind of had that mentality of like most wrestlers when the match starts, they kind of circle each other for a little bit and they lock up. It's like no, the Kellys and Finches would usually just like walk up to their opponent, grab them, and slam them and stare him down type of thing and i'm yeah, like yeah it sounds terrifying <laughs> it was it was guy yeah, i remember one time i think it was me and pat and dan Pata and maybe ron or don i can't remember and we went to a tournament in waterloo and we just told our parents we were going to a tournament we slept in a camper in east waterloo if they would have known we were here yeah. I like, we, but that was wrestling i mean you know it's it's like uh people respect each other and and they're not going to bother you and and we were there to go to a tournament and get better you yep. man there were some fun times i bet who were uh was billy dolman around a little bit when yeah, you were in high billy school billy dolman was around you bet the guy with the milkers grip yeah. you know he, he uh he and talk about a guy that just is passionate about it and i think it's really cool that and i don't know if this is true or not but mark said he didn't want the job unless Billy was with him. Yeah, I believe it. That's cool. You know, that yeah. that's that's uh that's something you want in your coaching staff. Yeah. I that. um got to talking to Lois De Leon um the other day to help me get some information for my project I'm working on. And I said, Lois, you just need to be on the podcast with me because um, you know, I've had Al's son on there, I had John, I had Rachel Lear on, the granddaughter. I'm like but what better perspective of the wife of a head coach? I think that's just a neat perspective. And she goes, oh, I'd love to. I just think I need like a wingman to help me out. And my instantly I thought Billy Dolman. And she goes, what about Billy? And I'm like, give me his number. And yeah. so I got his number. And I don't know if he really knew how to answer his phone. He's not really I don't know a tech if he's got guy. A I don't think he does. Maybe and he, he got it and he fumbled, you know, answered it and, um, I was like, what do you think, Billy? And he goes, well, I don't know how to do any of that computer stuff. So as long as on Lois's end or someone else can help us, I'll do it. That'll be fun. So this, like, next January, I'm, like, seven months booked out. Um, cool. Lois, Billy, and I are going to do a podcast. I think that'll be a fun one. We used to joke at home that if if he didn't – I mean, that was a truly – that was a match made in heaven, uh, Al and Lois. They were such a good combination where she would, you know, make sure that, like, after – kids won tournaments there would be that display and my sister actually was one of the mat maids that helped her out making those displays and it was yeah. um you know she ran it just like a wrestling practice this is how we're going to do it and uh but al would get so focused um one time pat when he was an eighth grader he was one of the uh managers and al went up to him like really intense go get done the thank god pat knew what he meant because he'd probably be running sprints, you know, uh, just those little things like that. He'd just get so focused. And and uh, we always joke that, you know, if it wasn't for Lois, he'd still be in the Osage parking lot trying to find how to get home. <laughs> <laughs> but he made wrestling really special. Yeah. Yeah. Just even with like, uh, I remember as a little kid watching, um, you know, guys that had those bars and stars on their warm up. What that was is how many pins they had and how many takedowns they had. And uh, you, you, you wanted that. He made it, he made things really competitive. 
and, and, you know, reasons why, why are you going to get a major decision? Why are you going to get a pin in this match? You know, and, and it was, it always, it all had a reason to it. And then heck on the other side of it, he was such a good Spanish teacher, mm -hmm. you know? So he, he, yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Going, going recruiting with him as, as uh, his assistant. That was fun. That's, that's probably one of the better experiences I've had in wrestling ever was being his assistant. Yeah. Because he took over at Waldorf for like two or three years or so. I can't remember exactly how many years it was. Uh, let's see. Our first season together was maybe 96, 97. And then I took over in 2001, I think. Yeah, 2000, 2001, something like that. Yep. Yeah, because they were going to drop the, the program. They came, Will, Bill Ham, who was the president at the time at Waldorf, he came up to him and said, hey, you're taking over or we're going to drop the program. To so Al or to you? To Al. To Al. Yeah. So that's why he took that job. Did he how did he like the college experience better than high school or was it, it? he loved it? Because he could let his hair down a little bit, you know, and mm -hmm. you have to be so guarded by what you say in front of high school kids. And mm -hmm. I and I think there's so many like, okay, you can only work out with them for so many days out of the year. With yeah. with college, you know, you've got more of a and he was so good at uh, being like a father figure to people. Mm -hmm. And that, that was his nature. And, and mm -hmm. you think about it, you know, when you, when you're, you have a kid that's 10 hours from home uh, on your college campus, who else would you want as their coach, yeah. you know, El De Leon in a heartbeat. Um, it was so fun going on home visits with him. We're recruiting. We, we'd, show up at their house and he'd have uh, salsa and some chips and <laughs> sit down and talk to the family for sometimes it's two, three hours. And uh, it just, he was so good at recruiting. Yeah. Um, did he ever regret though, per se, giving up his program in Brit or was he kind of ready to move on? Do you know, or, you know, we never talked just... about that. I, I think though the, the timing was right. Yeah. Um, because, you know, think about that. he, you know, and, and when you're recruiting, you know, you're a private to your school and you're about three to four times more expensive than your competition, just to have a lineup is important. And he did far more than that. I mean, he had 30 plus guys on the team and mm -hmm. that took a lot of work. I think he liked it though. Yeah. That's why he was so successful at it. Just a different challenge, but it was still wrestling at the end of the day. And the kids loved him. I bet. They did. They just, you know, because they, a lot of them, like I remember uh, Matt Kaufman from Emmitsburg, um, he just couldn't get enough of Coach Al because he knew the backstory because, yeah. um, you know, his dad, because uh, the Kaufmans were a real successful family over in Emmitsburg, wrestling wise. And uh, um, his dad probably competed against Coach Al's early teams in high school. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of a neat story there. But yeah. no, they, because he would drop i remember uh one of the comments one of the wrestlers said was he would drop it, whatever he was doing no matter how important it was to take care of your problem yeah and it could have been a girlfriend issue or it could have been you know i i don't know how to get my padlock done, undone he would drop everything he's doing and, and, and take care of you make that the priority and that's a rare thing any you know people don't do that as much anymore it's Wow. I learned, so much. I learned so much from the guy. Um, mm -hmm. Not about wrestling, just how to treat people right. And I, I remember the first lesson, I chewed a kid out in mm -hmm. front of his peers, and he kind of pulled me over right away and said, never do that. They yeah. will always win in those situations. Mm -hmm. Pull the kid aside, you know, somewhere else, chat about it, but you're not going to win in that situation. Yeah. yeah. It was an uphill like, battle at that point. Yeah, it truly is. Yeah. So I'm going to get back to your senior season here um, because, you know, some of your brothers won state and yeah. it sounds to me like you were pretty darn close. I want to kind of get your side of the story here and see what would have happened. Um, you finished third your senior season in 1990. Uh, you and Spencer Gear both made it to state that year. Yeah. Um, at Districts in Iowa Falls, you beat Chris Allen from Eagle Grove 6-2, to two, Randy Parentis from Iowa Falls 4-2 to two to make it to state. And then when you got to state in the first round, you beat Jeff Daly from Cresco eight to four. 
In the quarterfinals, you beat Rob Warren from Tama eight to nothing. And then in the semifinals, I couldn't find his first name, but the last name was Jens from yeah, Glenwood. Jets. You lost to him in overtime by criteria. Do you remember the kind of the details of that semifinal match? You know, I remember he was a returning champ coming in, and I was glad I was on his side of the bracket because I, I wanted to beat him in the semis. And I I thought I could beat him, but I didn't truly believe I could beat him until the overtime. And I remember telling Coach Allen, uh, uh, you know, I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat him." And I don't know what the criteria was. I don't want to know. But uh, you, you know, it was refs. It was the last year of refs' decision. And then I think he teched his guy in the finals. So that's what I was gonna ask you. What would it look like if you were in the finals? I don't know. We'll never know. But it was. I, I tell you, it was a fun experience. Uh, you know, rewind a second back to that district i remember um so getting prepared for you know i was in a uh i was in a cast for quite a while and i couldn't really wrestle so i had to swim and i and i know i was in the best shape i've never been in that good a shape uh just because of the swimming and it was cool because my mom would uh take me down to the grade school like at five in the morning and and because i had to have you know somebody with me when i'd swim so mm -hmm. she'd always go with me and but I remember that first round of districts, I got so tired and it was like fear uh, because, you know, high school district is, there's nothing like it. You know, there's, there's yeah. states that are just as good as Iowa high school wrestling wise, or there's some states that are better, but the, the, the importance of it and the fans, it's like no other, you know, it's the best state from that perspective. And that got to me and I was like, holy smokes, you know, I, I got to, I got to pull this one out and it was a tight patch and it shouldn't have been, but it was, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, no, that was, that was hard. That was hard to take, you know, cause when you lose a match like that, um, you know, it's, it's, your world is really, really small and you want to win because you had your brothers that, that did it. And, you know, your coach De Leon, he, he taught you everything you needed to know. And it was you that had to go out and do it. And you didn't. That was mm -hmm. tough. And some people may say, well, why are you hanging on to that? Well, because it was important to me. And, exactly. You know, and, and uh, you know, maybe it, maybe it made me want to continue on and wrestle in college. And, you know, because I could have just said, I'm done with this. But, you know, that was the, that was the bright side of it. Yeah. Cool. And then your dad, uh, in my research, your dad wasn't too bad of a wrestler back yeah, in the day either. You know, it was crazy. Um, at his funeral, two things I remember from that. Uh, Jim Mallon, when he came up and walked through the line, but ripped my hand off. He had such a good handshake. I didn't realize he was a two-way starter for uh, Northwest Missouri State. I wouldn't know. Uh, yeah, they were a top, top team in Division Two. And then um, on the back of the the wed or the funeral card, it had a picture of my dad with his team, and his neighbor at the condo that he lived at was one of his teammates. Okay, how does that happen? Hmm. You know, it's it's kind of interesting. But no, he he didn't ever push us and and, and say, hey, you have to wrestle. Um, but you know, he he wanted us involved in stuff. Whether it, I remember he had. Uh, Tim and Mike, or no, not Tim and Mike, Connie and Tim and Karen play piano, and they were probably not the best at it. <laughs> uh, and he figured out along the way, hey, maybe you should go into a sport that's a little bit more uh, rough and tumble. Yeah. He'd always take us to tournaments and, and never chew us out if we didn't do very good, but he just always encouraged us. Yeah. Sometimes I was like, oh, how come? Why is that parent screaming and yelling at their kid, but you're not screaming and yelling at us? Do you not want us to do good? Yeah. But oh, it was I, just an approach. Yep. That's the right approach as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Even as a golf coach, I've seen parents chew out their kids after shooting a 40 at a golf meet. And I'm like, you're going to make that kid never want to do that again. And then what yeah, good would that do you? So, Right. It happens. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to get to a few more sponsors and we're going to hit some college wrestling uh, as an athlete and as a coach here. 
We already hit some of that with talking about some Waldorf stuff, but uh, Sidetrack Lanes in Brit, I'd like to thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Sidetrack Lanes opened in Brit in 1996 under new ownership. Go bowl at 411 Main Avenue North. Enjoy some food and a drink or two while you're bowling. Join the league. Check out their events on their Facebook page. Call Sidetrack Lanes at 843-4567 or check out their Facebook page. That's Ron Bauer and Sidetrack Lanes in Brit. And then Michael and Brianne Ewing of Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company with locations in Britt, Kanawha, Clarion, Belmont, and Dows is my next sponsor. Mike is a 1998 graduate of West Hancock, and his family has been privileged to care for the communities of Britt and Kanawha since 1977. You can find them online at ewingfh.com or on Facebook. Give them a call at 843-3839 or 762-3211. That's Ewing Funeral Home and Monument Company. And they've been sponsoring these things since almost the beginning of this podcast. So thanks to the Ewings. The World with Nate podcast is my next sponsor. Nate Allison is the brother of a friend of ours here in Indianola from our church. He has his own podcast and it's his full-time job. It's called The World with Nate. He hits on a lot of great topics and his goal is to help and inspire people. Nate's an Iowan who loves helping people reach their dreams. Please check out his podcast, The World with Nate. It's on Apple, Spotify, or wherever else you can find your podcasts. Um, Give him a follow on social media as well. Then Mary Jo's Hobo House and Catering in Brit has been a huge supporter of Wes Hancock for over 28, going on 29 uh, years now. Travel Iowa has voted the Hobo House as having one of the 10 best burgers in Iowa. Visit Mary Jo's Hobo House for lunch and breakfast every day at 72 Main Avenue South. Call them at 843-3840, but make sure you do that soon because they are um, retiring here in a month or two. So make sure you get up there and see them while you can. All right, like you were saying, college wrestling, you went to Iowa Central in Fort Dodge for a couple of years. You were the 1992 national runner-up in your weight class. Um, the meet was in Bismarck, North Dakota that year. Um, just like I kind of asked with the state tournament in high school where you got third, would you have, could you have won that state title? How close were you to winning a national title for Iowa Central? You know, I, I probably beat the best kid. I beat the returning champ. Maybe in the quarters, mm-hmm. possibly. Uh, I had a real good mindset because I always remember Coach Al said, you have to write down, like you, you want to be a national champ, you got to write down five times before you go to bed every night. And I did that. I remember my brother Mike did that. And and I might have done it in high school. Maybe I didn't because that's why I probably didn't win, win state title. But um, so I, I bought into doing that. I so I had a great mentality going into that tournament. And in every match, I had a great mentality. And I distinctly remember it. And I shouldn't ever blame a loss on a coach, but I'll blame this one on a coach. <laughs> I'm not going to say his name. I will not do that. But um he said, hey, you just got to relax and go out and just open up because you beat the best kid quarters. And so I, I let my guard down and I went out and I remember I got ankle picked and put to my back right away. And I couldn't, the kid was really, really hard to score on. So I couldn't make that. I think I got beat maybe five to three. Um, so I, 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 I couldn't make that deficit up against this kid because he, he was really, really hard to score against then. But if, if I would have wrestled my match I would have won yeah. I know I would have it is kind of inter- interesting because I think that kid's son that I got beat by in the finals wrestled for uh wrestled against one of our guys at the national tournament this year okay at Nyack yeah yep yep small world especially I feel yep. like in the wrestling world sometimes there's a, like just cross crossovers and connections all over the place sometimes yeah yeah interesting storylines along the way too yeah. Uh, then you went to Iowa State and wrestled there for three more years. Uh, didn't yep. honestly do a ton of research looking into your Iowa State career. How'd you do uh, uh, at Iowa State? It was a pretty average career. You know, I was I was there physically, uh, but mentally I wasn't. I, I just yeah. think, you know, it probably it was, uh, do I belong? Part of it was maybe. And I wish, um, you know, I wish I would have went and wrestled with Mark. I had a great experience at Iowa State. It was yeah. academically, um, you know, I wasn't a great student, but it was a good ag program. And then just the wrestling, I got a lot better. But um, I was probably what you would call more of a practice wrestler. I loved working out, but I just, uh, 
I don't know. I probably should have wrestled with. I, I wish I would have went and wrestled with my brother Pat at Omaha. And uh, because he was wrestling for um, Nebraska Omaha Division Two Power, and their coach, incredible guy. Um, but no, I got I got to be coached by Bobby Douglas, and uh, he's a Hall of Fame type guy coach. So that was uh, important. I got to meet a lot of cool guys along the way. Um, learned a lot about wrestling, and you know what? I met my wife down there. So. Yep. That was a good thing. Yeah, there you go. Meant to be. You bet. How, how, did you wrestle varsity at all then at Iowa State? Or Yeah, I was in and out of the lineup like for three years. So those three years I was in and out of the lineup. Yeah. How would you have done it like the big, it was big eight back then or big 12? Uh, you know, it was tournament? crazy because uh, my, I think it was my junior year. Um, there's a guy named Mark Branch. He was a freshman. And he had a, he didn't have a 500 record going into the big 12 or big eight tournament. Okay. Yeah. And so I got fourth and there was, let's see, the guy that got first ended up, he was from Missouri. He got third at the NCAA tournament. The guy that got second at the big 12 got second in the nation. And the guy that got third, that Mark Ranch, he won the title that year. Oh, wow. And I think he won it uh by going 500 and he ended up being a four-time finalist oh. oklahoma state and he's actually the current coach at wyoming okay but he was this tall skinny lanky guy his dad i think his dad was like a basketball coach and uh just kind of got into wrestling because it was his thing and mm -hmm. and did well did you ever wrestle against iowa yeah yeah a couple times what was that like being over on the other side of uh Oh, uh, it was, Gable. you know, I, you didn't really think, about I guess you get so focused on what you're trying to do. You don't, um, think about stuff like that. At least I didn't. Yeah. yeah. That um, is pretty cool to say that you're right. You know, feet away from that type of guy. And, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Looking back, you bet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever bring any of that up in your recruiting things? Like, yeah, by the way, you know, Dan Gable, no. or Bobby Douglas, or is it mostly just what we're doing now? They want to, you know, it seems like a recruit. They want to, parents want to make sure that you're going to take care of them. Yeah. And they got to make sure it's the right campus for them because if it's not, it's not going to work out yep. because being a college athlete, I don't care what level, what sport you're doing. It's hard. It's, yeah. it's, it's a commitment. And, you know, that's, that's what's so cool about uh, Irving. You know, he, he's, he's just scratching the surface on what he can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and, you know, even thinking about Cole, you know, my own son, um, wrestling in college. And it's like, you got an automatic 30 buddies, 30 teammates that are going to be your buddy, you know, and, and that in itself is a great experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's talking about uh, Irvin Gomez, senior at, at West Hancock. He did a podcast with me uh, when they won state. Um, I did the one with all like I think there was 13 of those seniors on that football team. And uh, he was the one that stood out to me. And it's not because he was the all stater or the the running back or whatever. I'm like, just his present how he went up uh, presented himself and um he was so respectful and kind and appreciative. And I was like, um, I really like that kid. I told Mark Sanger that I'm like, Irvin was I, he's out, uh, you know, there was Matthew Francis and Kane Zool and all those studs on that team and I mean, like he, he did his role so well on that team. He um, knew what his role was and he did it. And then just the way he went about things, I was pretty impressed. So when I saw that he's going to wrestle for you, I was like, yeah, he, that seems like a guy maybe Steve would have gone after a little bit. And I'm excited to see how he does. Yeah, that is so true. I mean, he's such a genuine kid. He's going to be a good teammate. That's what I like. That's what I like about him, you know, because it's truly isn't about um, wins and losses. It's about the experience they have. Yeah, because you want them calling you up 25 years from now saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm doing good. And, and, and maybe something that you talked to me about when I was getting off track um, got me going in the right direction. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's yeah. what you really want. Yeah, yeah. Good kids like that. That's, that's I was at Central. I was a student coach and we'd watch a lot of film on recruits and stuff and um you know, looking at, can this kid do this on the field, whatever, but then the big conversation would always turn to, is he going to be a good teammate? Is he going to be a good student? Are they going to um, 
put us in a better position, not just to win, but to like promote the program and everything else. And um, that was pretty eye opening to me because I used to think college athletics, it was just how can this kid help me win? And it's it's a whole lot more than that is what I figured out pretty quick. Oh, yeah, it does. It, it goes a lot deeper than that. And, um, you know, are they going to bring everybody up around them? You want guys like that. Yeah, definitely. So you, what I read on the, in the paper when you're kind of uh, at the end of your I, Iowa State career was you're kind of burnt out from wrestling. You went and worked a, a real job per se. I always say, man, you can get into coaching full time. That's like, you don't work hardly a day in your life. It's just living the dream. But um, then Coach DeLeon got you back into uh, the wrestling world, coaching at Waldorf. We talked about that a little bit. You became the head coach. Um, what was that like being a head coach for the first time? It was scary. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it's no different than like when you, when you, when your parents pass, you know, and it's like, okay, now you're the guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's an, it's an adjustment, but it's, you know, I always knew I wanted to coach. I just, uh, I was very fortunate. It found me because like you said, when I was done wrestling, I didn't ever want to look at my shoes again. Yeah. I just wanted to park them and just move on. Yeah. Um, and then thank God my first job, I did not like, I remember I had to convince myself every morning to get up and go to work. Yeah. Not that I didn't like working. I mean, I learned a lot and it had a, a good upside to it. Um, but it just wasn't what I wanted at that time. And Can daily I do Allen, this for the next 30 years type of thing. Yeah, exactly. And I remember meeting daily on at a high school sectionals. Cause I think Mark, my brother was a senior that year and coach Al kind of chatted with me out in the lobby and I knew what he was getting at. <laughs> and so I, you know, and I said, yes. And, um, I'll never forget the first time somebody called me coach. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and, and I still remember it. It was in the hallway of, uh, the Hanson field house at Waldorf on the second floor. I, I'll never forget that day, but, uh, no, it was, it was a fun experience. And, um, but yeah, there's a lot of ups and downs with it. And um, you don't always have the answers. But I remember Jim Williams, he was the coach at Simpson. Mm -hmm. He was the coach at probably Dowling. Dowling, yep. Yep, yeah, a couple of other places. There was a really neat article about him in the paper. Um, he said he never told his wife he had to go to work because he didn't think of it that way. Education and coaching was, it was just a passion of his. That's a pretty cool thing to say. Yeah. yeah. My wife and I are both elementary teachers and we call it school. We don't say, yeah, we got to get up and go to work. It's go to school, which granted it's work and it's, you know, not every day is glamorous by any means, but it's like, I get to go tell dad jokes to nine-year-olds all day long, yeah. and all that stuff. So I, I get it. Well, think about, you know, even, uh, did you have Charlie Ashlin as a teacher? Nope. I never had him. Okay. He was, he was one of the science teachers and man, you know, that guy had tons of energy and he was a great teacher mm -hmm. and, and he truly loved it. Um, I didn't do very well in his classes, but <laughs> <laughs> he was a really interesting guy. And, and he, he did, he had a total passion for education. Yep. No, I, I missed out on several of those teachers that had been at Brit for decades, but I still got the Sangers, Mr. Timmerman, Mr. G, Mr. Pauls, Ms. Troutman, um i still Great. got a kind of that tail end of that group but man you guys went through um, yeah. you had those they teachers that were there for that. 20 plus years uh then they stayed till they're 40 plus years or whatever but did gene yeah. ever bowl in front of you uh in class he'd always Perkin? Act like, yeah i never oh. had him as a teacher he went oh, down to did. the he get, he was down at the middle school i think when i was just leaving it but I never okay. had him as a teacher and he only was my coach my senior year. Okay. Um, he left and Benning was there and then he came back after Benning left and stayed until, you know, 2018 or whatever, 2017. Okay. No, he, had but he was, great, he had some great one-liners too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. I, I ran uh, over to his place to give him a record book. Was that in 2020? And we sat and visited for a while and it, yeah, it was one after another. Um, <laughs> Yeah, had a good time with him. Got to be green and growing was his big one. Yeah. Not brown and moldy. Oh, geez. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm I'm happy for him. He He's one of the inductees into the Hall of Fame. Awesome. Um, well, well deserved. deserved. So, yeah, he's 
He's a good one. Oh, uh, so why'd you transition to Nyack? How'd that happen or what'd that look like? You know, it was, uh, I don't know. We were getting, it was a situation where just better resources. Um, I liked that two-year deal. I liked working with a kid, getting him put on the right track, and then seeing where he'd go after that. Mm-hmm. Because it was kind of unique at, at, at Waldorf. It was a uh, two-year private. And then you had that three-year bachelor's in like communications and maybe something else. And then they got bought out and then they went to the four year and we had some nice success. I had a national champ. He was the OW, uh, Brad Stockton. And, but then um, it just got to the point where it got frustrating because we were priced so high compared to some of the competitors and just resources. And, uh, you know, I knew Naya could be a, a good fit. You know, your first season was 2009, 2010. Um, you got third at nationals in 2015. You were fourth in 2016. You were 12th in 2020. Uh, must have gotten that tournament done right before COVID hit would be my guess. Yeah. And then, yep. uh, Them and us and NAIA were the only two that happened. Had their tournaments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't even want to think back to that year. That was nuts. Uh, but yeah. then this past season, 2022, so just – couple months ago you guys were fifth and you had two national champions um and you were named the national coach of the year uh what what was this season like for you if you had to put it into Uh, words here it was kind of interesting because we had a couple third year guys so that was fun working with those guys uh past their you know normal junior college experience Mm -hmm. and it was fun having some of that older leadership um we had, we had a good team. I mean, we were probably, you know, when you think about it point wise, uh, our 25 pounder was in the quarters and he broke his hand. He wasn't able to wrestle back. And then our 74 pounder got beaten overtime in the semis. Um, so we were just really not that far out of top. We probably yeah. wouldn't be at that two, but we could have been top three. Yeah. Um, no, it was a fun experience and it was great that 97 pounder won it. That was fun to see. Say uh, sixty-five pounder. We knew that, that. Well, that kid, that kid was a it, sixty-five is a really, really deep weight class. I mean, there was a kid that was a five-time state champ from New York. Penn State uh, kickback uh, was in his bracket too. That one sixty-five. So that was that. I guess that wasn't a given. But uh, nope. the way that the ninety-seven pounder lost last year, uh, you know, it was really nice to see him win it this year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've had what seven national champions at NIAC and 37 all Americans. What's that? Nine. You're off a little bit. No, is it nine? Yeah, I believe it's nine. Well, that's even better. I like no. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's kind of been the secret to your success at NIAC? What's what's Some good people around me? <clears throat> I've got really good assistants. Basil mm-hmm. Mento, his his he's the brother of the the 65 pounder that won it. Um Tommy and Donnie Barry and Adam Foss, they do, we worked really good together. And mm-hmm. that's part of it. Is, and is no, the re- if you looked in our, if you looked at our corner, you probably wouldn't know who the head coach was. Yeah. Cause we just, we want the kids to get better. Yeah. Is it your full-time job or do you have other roles at NIAC? Yeah, I, I do admissions. Okay. So, then I, you're, so from my perspective, it's a lot on my plate, but from a parent's perspective, they want answers. Mm-hmm. When they sit across from you and you talk about the college and the set and the other, they want answers. So if that's the benefit of being in admissions, because I know a lot about the college. I know about financial aid. I know about degree programs. I know what programs they can go into and have a successful career. I know yep. job placement, that kind of stuff. So that's a benefit. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I know you have some Iowa kids, obviously, Cole and Irvin, just alone right there, but you're in Florida recruiting. What states do you kind of hit the most, hit the hardest for recruiting? It's kind of a mixed bag. Um, you, you know, every you know, every now and again, you'll get a call like we're working on a kid from Ubekistan right now. <laughs> um, so it's 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 wide open, really. How, how does that come to be a kid from Uzbekistan? Well, I just, Mason you know, City. Yeah, it, it's uh, uh, kids you meet along the way that, that that have a buddy that they think that you know they benefit from the way you coach, and and uh, it, that's that's kind of how it gets going. 
it's connections. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's those connections. And I remember the Disney duels, that's the actual tournament that I went down to when I recruited Basil, uh, Basil Mintel, uh, Christian's brother. And hopefully we're going to get their younger brother who's going to be a senior. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's cool. those personal contacts. And if you, yeah. if you stop going for one year, you, you know, it's, you, you start losing that connection. So you always got to be out there doing it. You got to re represent your school. Yeah. What, what percentage of your job would say is recruiting compared to actually coaching? I mean, coaching obviously is just a part of the senior season, but I mean, are you recruiting year round pretty much, or do you have kind of a window that you have to do it in? You kind of got to be actively recruiting because I'd say when we went down to Disney, um, most of those kids that we ran across were juniors. Yeah. Um, so then you're kind of planting the seed for that next class, but there's still four or five kids that I need to get from this class to feel good about where we're going to be at. Yeah. And, you know, it's those always talking to four year school coaches, um, just, just always, you know, always thinking about it. Yeah. Is but a big part. Oh, sorry. Where... I was just, I was wondering too, since you're a two year college is a big part of your, your push, like, we've placed this many kids at division one schools after NIAC to, you know, any division, but is that, or is it mostly just, here's what we're going to offer you here at NIAC? Yeah. You know, it's, that's a little bit of it, but not every kid is fit to be a division one kid or they don't have the discipline or yeah. even, uh, you know, an athlete at a four-year school because it's just that much more academics and that much more, um, intense of a room you're going to be in um, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to pull the reins back on a kid and say hey listen you know i've got to be honest with you you might not be a good fit for that school mm -hmm. um you know or you know uh it's okay to be done after two years and go out and get a really good job if you you know say have a automotive degree or a diesel degree you know it's it's that's that's the right uh track for you yeah you probably have a lot of connections though with other schools and coaches they contact you frequently about hey i need a 65 pounder um right you know, type of thing yeah and it, and it works both ways because you know like we're still looking for a couple weights and uh so you always got to keep those coaches uh on your speed dial yeah any uh like kale sanderson tom brands connections on in your cell phone or a lot of times those guys uh uh have their their lineups pretty much set where they yeah. you know they, they've got a, a pretty good stable of athletes that they're dealing with yeah 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 I, like i said i was a part of the central football team in pella and the recruiting piece was my least favorite but most intriguing part of the whole college athletics part because it was just it was a grind and there was always something going on and that was that part of it, you know, learning from Coach Al, that's what was so fun because, you know, he could paint a picture to these kids and these families about what it was going to be like. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there was no ego there. It was just Coach Al sitting down with the family and 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 uh, making being them real. feel comfortable. That, yeah, being real. And that this is yeah. we're going to take care of you and you're important to us. Yeah. And so when they ask, does it snow up there? Do you just say, no, we don't get bad weather? Well, you just tell them it gets to be about 15 if you don't tell them if it's negative or positive. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be fine. Small campus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Small campus is going to run fast. Yeah. My, uh, my ex-brother-in-law used to play football at Dubuque. And back in the 90s, it was like those guys were like smoking cigarettes on the sideline. That was that type of program back then. And he the said Rock Bowl, that. Right? Is that the Rock Bowl? uh that's loris oh that's loris but same town but yeah he uh he said a lot of the players were from texas and florida and whenever that first snow would hit you didn't see a lot of those guys second semester they were like yep see you later <laughs> right right it's like, a big adjustment and that's where you know the high school coach and the parents you know they gotta they're gonna make good decisions there because it's, does it make sense for you to go all the way up there you know it's a culture shock being yeah. away from home and it's tough that first yeah. year yeah so you're almost setting yourself up to fail in situations yeah. like that yeah. yeah my first roommate at central was uh johnny martinez from phoenix arizona and he had that epiphany about halfway through the football season of 
Pella, Iowa isn't quite the place for me. He uh, now he's a pastor at a church doing, down there doing great and found a wife and doing awesome. But um, what I learned quickly too was, you know, they'd bring in 50 kids on the football team as freshmen or transfers. And you were happy to have like 15 of those guys by the time they were graduating. Um, it's just right attrition, you know, some guys, it's not a good fit for them or they get hurt or they just realize how hard it was or just didn't blend in or they thought they should have been higher up on the depth chart than they were. And it's, it's, it was interesting to say the least. So. Yeah, it's, it's tough, you know, for, for a kid to uh, finish four years of, of college athletics, like I said, yeah. I don't, it's ping pong. It's a hard deal. It's tough. Yeah. There's a lot and, of lonely moments, but you got to get through it. And my next question kind of blends into this conversation. Um, Cause like central is D3. Nyack is junior college. Uh, then you have like the morning sides of the world. How would you compare junior college wrestling like Nyack compared to like NAIA division three, division two, where would you say that kind of, that kind of ranks? You know, that's a good question because you're always going to have those arguments because it's like in Iowa, you always say, okay, what's better class A, 2A or 3A? And, and yeah. you always get arguments about it. Um, it's kind of tough to compare because you got a, an 18 year old or a 19 year old kid compared to a 22 year old mm -hmm. uh, man, whether he's division one, two or three, he's tough. Yeah. And, and, uh, but that junior college kid is probably a little bit more talented, um, you know, because, but at the end of the day, when you get two guys that are going for a title in division one, division two, NAI, or division, those kids are tough. They're putting it on the line and they're good. Yeah. Um, so, so I, I just, I don't want to, you know, disrespect the one, one of those divisions and say, well, juniors is better than this, but not better than that, but hands down division one is the best. Yeah, obviously. You know, you probably have a round of 12 guy. That's probably the blood round guy. You know, he could probably win, I'd say, a title in those other divisions. Yeah. Like Warburg's kind of the the team here in Iowa. They're D3 powerhouse. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there ever possibilities that, like, a junior college would wrestle, like, a Division three school? Yeah, or? There's, it, it, it's – it kind of can be tough for um, – tough for – I, because if, if the, the junior college beats that school, that makes that school look bad, you yeah. know, so really vice not, versa probably too. Yeah. Right. But at open tournaments, you'll run into kids like that. You'll be able yeah. to wrestle. That's what's neat about going to open tournaments is you can wrestle kids from all different divisions. Yeah, and sometimes, yeah. you know, like they have the conference schedule set. So there's not an opening to be able to wrestle, you know, a team from a different division. And mm -hmm. I think it'd be cool to see, you know, like, like uh, Grandview, they're a power yeah. uh, in NAI. It'd be fun to watch them wrestle Warper. Yeah. You know, and see who wins the small school title. Yeah. That Grandview coach came to I-35 where I teach and did the motivational talk with all of our athletes one day. He's a good guy. Yeah. He, yeah. he, good he was like, you know, we got second one of the years either, like before they won like 10 straight national titles and, he talked about how that still kind of eats him inside, but at the end of the day, he's just moving on to the next day. Like there's no, not a lot of point of dwelling on, you know, something I'm like, if the worst thing you have to dwell on is second at nationals and you're doing all right, I'd say, but. You know, what's really cool about that is, uh, okay. So back, I can't remember how many years ago, Jeff, my brother, Jeff worked at Grandview and, and it was kind of struggling there. And then all of a sudden they had wrestling and football Mm -hmm. And they just that totally changed that image of that school. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, and you know, a lot of success, and it's a you know, it's it's the it's the school to go to, in in the in the metro area. Yeah, my buddy from Central's the head strength coach there, and he has like eighteen national championship rings now between all the wow. sports he works with. And it's it's pretty impressive. Yeah, they're, um, they're, it's a it's a good athletic department, and yep. it's a, they do well academically too. Yeah. Yep. They're pretty strong all around. Mm -hmm. um, let's get back to Wes Hancock here a little bit. We got a few more sponsors to get to, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, what's it been like seeing your kids go through Wes Hancock and having the success that they've had in athletics? Like Cole won a state title in 2019, and then his senior year in 2020 was just, you know, I just created the record book, and then I had to 
revamp a lot of it for Cole because he was just ripping through some of those records. Uh, I kind of laughed. laughed and you said I had four touchdowns. Or no, I, I had 10 touchdowns and led the team. Or maybe, maybe my junior year, maybe me and Kevin yeah. both had yep. 10. Yep. And I'm like, holy smokes, he had like 30-something. Yeah. Like, Seven in one game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, I'm I'm so glad they're they're here. I you know I always knew I wanted to live in Brett, mm. even when I was young, and it's just a good place to to grow up. And you know, there's a lot of people that have gone before you, so it's like you know, like I thought it was kind of cool because I was coach of the year. But then I drive through Brett, and I'm like, wait a minute, we've had Bob Steenledge, we've had the Higgins, we've had um, that. Wilson girl that was the division three player. Candace year. Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. A girl that's one Drake. So it, it's cool for being from a community that, um, and I think there was a guy that was from Brit that won the NAIA national championship for Southern Oregon. A guy that, that was from Brit that coached out there. So oh, Bob Ream. Yep. There we go. You yep. got that. So there's, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people to look up in this, look up to in this community. Yeah. That's what's awesome about being here. Uh, I think it's great they're going through the system and and uh, good coaches, good teachers. It, it's it's uh, it's fun to be a part of it. Yeah, and Kennedy, um, I th- she's one of the best, the most fun basketball players I've ever watched. Um, <laughs> I just love how fired up she'd get and how intense she would get. And then I'm like, oh, I'm kind of glad they didn't start up girls wrestling until just recently because I don't think we would have seen her on the basketball floor. Probably she'd be. She'd be on the mat ripping it up. Um, I think she'd be on the fence. I truly do. She'd be, yeah. boy, she'd be a good wrestler. She would have been. And uh, she, we were having some open mat workouts, and she kind of twisted her ankle, and then I think that kind of helped her make the decision. Maybe I'll stay yeah. in basketball. But, yeah, I remember, gosh, she's scared. She's not scared of anything. I remember yeah. a year when she was getting warmed up, you know, to come out. And there, was some, there was some good girls that year on the West Hancock team, juniors, and then some seniors and that were, yeah. that were ahead of her and some strong personalities. And I'm like, gosh, she's acting like she's the leader. It was just funny watching her, uh, her body yeah. language, you know, if it would have been me, I would have been kind of, you know, meek and mild, but no, she's not scared of anything. That's one thing yeah. that's fun to watch about her. Yeah. I, I would have loved to see them win that state championship, um, 2019. Um, yeah, man, that new Fonda plan. team was, Oh yeah. Um, they were both- Newell That's Fonda a, is, uh, they probably, I mean, they wouldn't have won the big class, but they would have given that, is it 4A? They, they would have given them a run. Yeah. Well, they're 15 girls deep, and they didn't care how many times they fouled you because no, they could no. just run a next crew in every two minutes and just wear you out. And, That'd be fun playing on a team like that, you know, because oh, man. You, you, you just play with reckless abandon. And yeah. it was just like, you felt bad for our girls because they were just like getting attacked <laughs> yeah there was like 15 kennedys out there is what we kind of yeah. were saying they were just all they're just all over the place but yeah it's it's been a lot of fun watching your kids um i think my favorite memory though was i was watching on the live stream i think it was the dual regional final two years ago to go to state watching kennedy in the stands on the live stream just going absolutely nuts. I think she was sitting in front of you and Deanna yeah. and I'm like, holy cow. I, I, I stopped focusing on the match for a while. Just watching her react to the match. That was a blast. She was getting into it. If he would have lost that match, she would have gave it to him at home. She was yeah. like, why don't you do this and this and this and this, you got to go after those guys. She's intense. She's driven. Yep. I love it. Uh, yeah. It's funny. You know, being a parent of a, of a wrestler is it's tough. Oh, I can imagine. You know? Football is real, real fun, and wrestling's tough. Basketball, I don't know what they're doing, so I, I don't get that nervous out there watching it. <laughs> Put the ball in the hole. That's all you got to I, I yell three seconds. Yeah. Because I hear other people yelling it. I don't know what yeah. it means. Yeah, as long as you're the loudest, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. It's about 9.30 as we're recording this, so, you know, we're getting – we're not getting any younger. It's about bedtime, so. Right. Uh, but I have a few more sponsors to get to, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Katie Salon and Tanning is owned by Katie Walk. They're located on Main Street in Titonka. They've been there for about 17 years now. 
Uh, she has does men's, women's, and children's haircuts, colors, perms, waxing, styles, tanning, plus many brands of retail are available. Find Katie's Salon on Facebook or Instagram. Call her at 515-928-2303 for appointments. Go Eagles, says Katie. Uh, Levi Don Trucking. Uh, thanks to Levi Don and his trucking company for sponsoring a bunch of these episodes. Call Levi at 641-860-0077 or look him up on Facebook. That's Levi Don Trucking and Britt. Thanks to Jeff and Becky Nielsen for sponsoring this episode. Jeff was my guest on episode 38 and did a great job, and they wanted to sponsor this one with Steve and give back to the Sanger Legacy Fund. Uh, Jim Deemer and the Brit Vet Clinic. The Brit Vet Clinic is also long-term sponsor in the podcast. They're located in downtown Brit. They're there for all your small animal vet needs and swine vet services. Call them at 843-3416. Email them um, at BritVetClinic at gmail.com. And then First State Bank takes pride in their community-based values and they want to be your bank. They take pride in serving the Eagle Nation communities. They can personalize your banking products to meet the needs of your busy life with free internet banking and their mobile banking app with mobile deposit. Try their bill pay services as well. First State Bank backs their Eagles 24 seven, just like their service to you. First State Bank, whether it's personal, business, real estate, or ag loans, they have the products to serve you best. And then this one sponsor, I don't know if you've heard of them, Steve, Kelly Real Estate. Uh, they've been in business for about 62 years now, starting with a guy named Paul Kelly. Paul handed the business off to Steve and Deanna in 2017. Uh, they've been involved with the business for over 20 years themselves, and it sounds like you guys enjoy it. Um, it's a great way to get to know people and get involved with the community. Kelly Real Estate this uh, last year now added Rachel Swanson to their team and also office manager Nora Clark. So if you're looking for just the right starter home, the perfect forever home, or a unique fixer-upper, or even transition into your retirement home, call Kelly Real Estate at 843-4102. I should have just had you read that, but I don't want to put you on the spot or anything. But, all right. Yeah. Um, so thanks again to all those sponsors. There's 19 of them tonight. Um, next up on the podcast, um, I have Joseph Smith tomorrow, so I'll get a podcast with an Iowa Hawkeye, Dave Paderud, and then Kevin Sanger, part two. And then the 2007 football team, we're going to do a watch along and watch one of their playoff games. Um, I've booked out my 2022 lineup and into 2023 uh, as well. Um, I'm going to do one with Lois DeLeon and Billy Dolman in January. I'm pretty excited for. But one I'm really excited for is a bunch of the old elementary teachers that we had. Mrs. Kitchen, Mrs. Savoy, Mrs. Hildman, Mrs. McCauley, and Mrs. Farrell. Um, are going to come on with me in December. So I'm already trying to hit up people to sponsor former students want to just give 10 bucks or whatever and get, I'd like to get a list of like a couple hundred people um, to read off to those teachers to show them, you know, how much we appreciated um, what they did for us growing up. So if you want to be a part of that, let me know. Um, like I always do at the end of these things, Steve, just want to throw out any a chance for you to do any shout outs or anything we didn't hit on earlier that you want to hit on or Whatever, remember, go ahead. Yeah, one little thing, one one memory growing up, it was so fun uh, when I could finally go into the high school to, to lift weights and work out with the high school kids. I think it was before my, I don't know, before my freshman year, I remember it was so cool seeing how serious some of these guys took it. And, and yeah. you know, like I remember like Jim Byers, he played college football, I think at one, uh, I don't know where he played college football. But he came back and he'd left. And I thought that, man, that was cool watching him yeah. uh, be real intense. And then uh, uh, and then I remember like Don Halick was kind of on the fence of if he was going to play football or not. And he, you know, Bob just said, hey, keep working. Something's going to pop open. Yeah. And he ended up having a real good. He was kind of one of the first guys to go to Central. Yep. Don he Haley was. was. Yep. Yeah. He was and the... I remember him and Mike Smith would just really get after it. And it was fun. It was a good uh, learning experience for me to watch those guys. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being on here, Steve. Um, not every day I get to say I do a podcast with a national coach of the year. So it was <laughs> a lot of fun and um, got to talk some wrestling and football and shoot the breeze. So I enjoyed it. Hopefully yeah. you did too. So oh, it was a good time. you bet. All right. Well, Thanks for watching tomorrow night, Joseph Smith. Um, that'll be a good one as well. So go Eagles. All right. Take care.